Why are we pairing 32 gigabytes of RAM with the 7700 and a GTX 1080? Why are we doing it in 2021? That's clever. I, I see you, Dell. I see you sliding that $9.99 a month charge into the invoice a month after the purchase. So no one ever notices, right? It's okay. More than ever, people are buying pre-built PCs right now. That's a mix of mainstream or casual users purchasing for at-home use and, uniquely, of enthusiasts flooding the market to try and get a video card from anything. That means that companies are taking advantage of users using new and innovative screwery and also old tricks. This is going to look at the most common pitfalls for buying an OEM built or SI built, meaning a pre-built computer, and how to avoid those, or at least how to best navigate them so that you get the best value without getting accidentally screwed over. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So we're gonna outline the most common pitfalls or just traps to fall into when you're buying a pre-built computer. This will apply to people who don't really know much about computers and the people who have built a couple computers in the past but might just be trying to get a GPU or helping a friend buy one or whatever. Some quick vocabulary as we get into this, we're gonna be saying the phrases OEM and SI a lot in this video. An OEM is an original equipment manufacturer. They assemble a computer, they're very large, it's like Dell, HP, Acer, Lenovo, and an SI is a system integrator. That would be a someone like CyberPower, Main Gear, Digital Storm, Falcon Northwest, whomever. It's a sort of more boutique form of an OEM, but they are less likely to be branding their own motherboards and things like that, more likely to be buying branded parts that you're familiar with, and then building a computer. Both groups have their ups and downs. We put together, though, a really small, tiny list of common ripoffs or mistakes encountered when buying a pre-built gaming PC. Now, to be clear, not all of these are malicious, but uh, the end result is the same, which is that you end up with just not a good deal. Also, to be really clear for any newcomers, most of our audience knows this, but uh, neither of these types of companies really make anything. They assemble them. There's nothing wrong with that. We just want to be really clear so everyone understands where we're starting from here. The uh, companies like Dell or HP, they might brand some motherboards. CyberPower might do some keyboards. To some extent, they'll customize those, but nowhere near the extent of a peripheral-specific manufacturer or a motherboard-specific manufacturer. Typically, it's a white-labeled type of thing where they'll put a new company's label on it with minimal changes. So that's the maximum amount of customization you'll see for most of these. For the most part, they are computer builders, and that's the service you're paying for. That also means you're paying for things like a consolidation of warranties. Now, instead of having maybe eight different device warranties for each thing on the computer, you have one, you have one point of contact, you send it back and forth with that SI or OEM, and that's part of the value they provide, which is it doesn't work anymore, you don't need to troubleshoot it, you call them, you send it back, they fix it. Now, sometimes OEMs do something that's a, a little bit more maybe accidentally evil, which is uh, tweaking form factors in a non-standard way, which means that you now have parts that might be either extremely difficult to find replacements for or parts that are just not compatible with basically anything else. Dell has done this in the past, so has Alienware HP, where you'll end up with a, a motherboard or a power supply or a case. It's only one of those three form factor that is just not a real form factor or is extremely rarely used to the extent that replacements can basically only be gotten through the OEM from which you bought the system. And uh, that sort of, obviously, it's, it's, it's a bit of a repugnant move because it sort of condemns the system to a landfill or the parts to a landfill because they are non-standard by nature, which is unfortunate and wasteful and a terrible thing. But uh, that's one of the things we'll be talking about. Now, not all of the pitfalls are evil ones, of course. There's also things that are just, well, not a good deal. Some of these in that list we showed are just good to know about to save some money, like not buying peripherals from OEMs and SIs if they can be purchased elsewhere, or using parts that really don't make sense for the rest of the build. We'll start with the worst thing we've seen recently. Some of you saw this in our recent news video, so we'll keep it really short. We already have a six-minute piece on it in our recent news video that we'll link below. Uh, technically speaking, 
what Dell is doing right now probably doesn't, it, it doesn't qualify as a scam uh, for legal reasons, but it certainly is, in our opinions, a ripoff and a bad deal, and it, it, we think it's highly unethical. What Dell is doing, if you didn't see our news video, is sliding in a $9.99 or $4.99 a month support option for a pre-built system that's, we think, buried on the page below all of these other uh, internal component and peripheral options you can add or change or whatever. By the time you get to the bottom, uh, you're, you're bored of it and you want to just buy the computer, but there's no add to cart button down there. It's at the top. So the chance of seeing this, we think, is relatively low. And the chance of thoroughly reading and just getting past the, the, the unspoken understanding between the two parties, the seller and you, the buyer, the unspoken understanding that uh, the seller is not going to try and rip you off monthly for something you don't want when you're trying to buy a single purchase item like a computer. All of that is what makes this, we think, unethical. Dell is doing a promo of a free support option. That is, it's, it's free for the first month, and if you uncheck it, then it's $9.99 less to buy the computer. So that's the opposite of free. But anyway, Dell's agency emailed us to argue that it isn't a problem uh, because we assume they're morally bereft, but the real problem is that this is a thing that it, it's a promo. They don't charge you for the first month, but then after that, they'll start charging you. And this is a feature which, at the end of the day, you shouldn't need to use. We saw someone in the comments of the news video saying, uh, I actually got use of this because my RTX 2060 and my Dell machine died and they sent out a technician to replace it. Here's the thing. If that's happening within the normal warranty period, which is at least a year for the systems we were looking at, then that's going to happen anyway. You don't have to pay extra to get that. That's kind of like through Origin, when you buy a pre-built and you pay $80 to get it shipped in a box to guarantee it doesn't break on arrival, which is obviously ludicrous marketing because the whole point of reasonable merchantability is that when you buy it, it arrives working. Just as an easy example, we sell glassware on our site, and every now and then the carrier will put the package in a trebuchet and hurl it about 300 meters. And when they do that, if it breaks on arrival, all the customer has to do is email us and we'll replace it because it needs to arrive working. Otherwise, what's the point? And it's the same thing with a computer. If it arrives and there's a problem within the normal warranty period, you don't have to pay extra. That's them gaslighting you, we think, our opinion, uh, into paying extra for something which is already provided. Anyway, we'll keep this one short. Just watch out for that stuff. When you're buying the system, make sure there's no uh, sort of subterfuge going on where there's this sneaky uh, extra payment per month for something that either you don't want or you might not need. If you want to add that support option, go for it. But we just want to make sure everyone knows that it's intentional. OK, overpriced peripherals are next. And one of the more interesting ones, if you scroll through, say, CyberPower, iBuyPower, Origin, you'll normally see that they're trying to offload peripherals onto you with the purchase of the computer. That's fine. That's a normal upsell. This is a standard part of buying something. You go buy a car, they're going to try and offer you Bluetooth and what else do cars have? I don't know what they offer anymore. My car's old. But anyway, they'll tr probably try and offer you things that are newer than my vehicle. Uh, so this is creating the, uh, the appearance of an all-in-one, out-of-box experience. But a lot of these things, like a monitor, or a keyboard, or a mouse, it's not like CyberPower Origin, iPower, or anyone else is doing additional setup for that. There's one exception. That's internal components where there might be drivers involved. But for the most part, if you get it and you open it, it's going to be the same whether they ship it to you or whether Amazon, Newegg, or Best Buy ship it to you. It'd be like paying the restaurant not only for food at the restaurant, but also to send them to another restaurant and order you food at their retail prices and then mark it up. So this is a lot different than buying a case that Digital Storm designs but Lee and Lee built. In that instance, the SI or the OEM is still designing something and making something unique. It's just via another factory. And that's completely fine. It's common practice. Very few people own factories. And that includes us for our own products. But the difference is reselling someone else's completed branded peripheral like, say, Corsairs, at a higher cost than retailers is just a bad deal. It doesn't make sense. In this CyberPower listing, for instance, we found several offenders. The MSI MAG 27 CQ monitor is listed via CyberPower for $450, but it can be had from retailers for $74 cheaper at around $376. You would pay 20% more at CyberPower, but it's not like there's any setup involved to the monitor that CyberPower can even help you with. There's no value here. They're just shipping it to you. Another example is the Corsair K95 RGB keyboard, which CyberPower is selling for $190, despite being readily available on retailers for as low as $130. 
The EVGA new audio card is a little trickier. It's an optional add-on via CyberPower for $209. It's normally $250. CyberPower in this instance is $60 to $100 more than Newegg, where the new audio card's $150. It's higher than Amazon's $170, higher than Walmart's $160 to $170. And even still, paying $50 for installation seems steep since they're already building the whole system anyway, and the markup on that isn't that much higher than what you're paying on this new audio card. Iowa Power continues this trend where you can pay I buy power $70 for a Blue Snowball ICE microphone. It's a USB mic that you put on your desk and it's $50 on Amazon. Origin is another one. It's really actually kind of embarrassing because it's owned by Corsair, which also owns Elgato, and yet it still overcharges for products that are within the family of these three companies. Origin offers the Elgato Game Stream Deck Mini for $100, which is available via retail for $80. The K95 is $200 via Origin, which is cheaper via competitor CyberPower that isn't owned by Corsair. And that's already, by the way, too expensive at CyberPower, too. The display section offers an Asus VS248H-P for $200, which is otherwise $130. The Asus PA278QV display is $371 at Origin, but it's $300 via retail. And there's, again, no setup that Origin will do for you on this. The keyboards and mice are at least mostly the same as retail, so maybe there's value here in that it's in the same box. But if you can buy it locally or just get it elsewhere with some other shipment, it might be worth doing that to be sure. We will give Main Gear props for this one. It doesn't look like there's any upsell, at least on the systems we checked. It looks like they're really just trying to sell the computer. You add it to the cart, they offer a free warranty, and then that's it. There's no games played. The point is pretty clear here. When it comes to buying accessories and extras from the OEM or the SI, it's not, this is one where it's, it's not evil for them to try and sell that to you for a markup. And there is a reason that it costs more, and it's a valid reason. It's not like the warranty thing where it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit on the shady side. Uh, but it is more expensive, and there's no added value for you, maybe the exception of something like an internal sound card where they can at least socket it for you. Uh, and so it's probably better to just buy it somewhere else if you want to be more cost conscious and economical. Most beginners would be able to handle something like installing an audio card, but yeah, maybe there's 50 bucks of value there if you really don't want to mess with the drivers or your time is that valuable, which is certainly possible. In instances where OEM brand a peripheral like Dell and the Alienware monitors or Corsair's uh, mice and keyboards, for example, when you're buying a PC from Corsair, those are instances where, in theory, it shouldn't be an upsell to you. It should be about as cheap as it's going to get, but that's pretty uncommon. Uh, Dell is one of the major examples of that with its monitors. So it's generally cheaper to just buy separately. We talked to an SI about why this is, just out of curiosity, and it was what you would expect. It comes down to economies of scale and order volume, where the SIs especially, more so than the OEMs, are not ordering sufficient volume to get the volume discounts that a company like uh, Newegg, Best Buy, Micro Center, or Amazon might get where they're populating all these stores. They might be buying thousands of units at a time, depending on how big the retailer is. And because they're not buying that many, uh, the cost is going to be higher per unit, so they sell it for more. One SI told us off record that it only sells three to five high-end keyboards. That'd be like that $200 class keyboard per month compared to thousands of systems in the same window. So you can see why this is not particularly popular and it doesn't even look like they're trying to make a lot of money on it. Because if you're selling three to five and it's in the tens of dollars increments higher than full retail, it's not like they're really profiting that much compared to all their system sales. And that's why we think that Main Gear here probably has the better idea of decluttering all the BS out of the purchasing system, different topic entirely, but uh, reducing the chance that the user abandons the cart in the process of buying it or becomes distracted or wants to research something and goes somewhere else, registers it, and then never comes back. Because uh, they're just, you add it to the cart and it's like, here's the computer, do you want to buy it or not? And that probably is, is a more straightforward process if your core business is the computer and not the upsell. Now, the other side of this is attachment. And this is interesting. We'll do this in another video. But uh, it's the idea that a board partner selling video cards might be forcing an SI to buy a bunch of peripherals, sometimes power supplies, backpacks, things that the board partner, that would be a company like uh, Gigabyte, MSI, EVGA, ASUS, whomever, it, ports that they can't get rid of, but they know an SI like CyberPower or iBuy really might be desperate for a box of GPUs because they can't sell any of their product without those. 
And so they'll say, you know what, you want this box of GPUs? You have to buy this pallet of backpacks and mouse pads that we made for a trade show and we were never able to get rid of. And so that's how you end up with some of these things on the site when it's, it really doesn't make a lot of sense otherwise. Some interesting behind the scenes information for you. All this leads us to the next topic of mismatched components. This is an old tired topic among pre-builds, but we'll go over it quickly. Mismatched components within a pre-built by the uh, visage of anyone who knows what they're doing do have a tendency to create the perception that there's wasted money pouring into the build for little yield. You can look at some of our Walmart coverage for that. Here are a few examples. When we were ordering an Alienware system, upgrading the GPU from an RX 5300, which we didn't even remember existed, to an RTX 3080 enforces a required power supply of 1000 watts capacity. The default for the system was 550 watts, so we don't really disagree that the 550 watt one might be unsuitable depending on the rest of the build. But 1000 watts is well past overkill. There's a chance that some of this cost is absorbed by Dell and that it's just easier for them to offer two power supplies instead of more reasonable options of 550 watts, 650 watts, 800 watts, whatever, because it might start to complicate things in warehousing. But either way, there's also a chance that you're paying for a needless upgrade. iBuyPower offers a mainstream AMD system, that's the name of it, with an R55600X and an RTX 3060 included. This iBuyPower system pre-selects a 600 watt power supply as the default. That, again, is overkill by about 100, 150 watts, somewhere in that range, for the 5600X and the 3060. Remember, 5600X can run at something like 65, 70 watts. But it becomes a marketing game as well to less winning customers where they might be looking at bigger number better mentality. In the same system, iBuy Power is pairing a single stick of RAM with an R5 5600X. Ryzen is notoriously fussy about memory and dropping to a single stick, especially depending on the ranks, can have adverse consequences to performance. Meanwhile, the company is charging $1,615 for this computer, and it has one stick of RAM. And it's also including an RGB LED liquid cooler. So the priorities are completely out of place. By the way, that liquid cooler is not any good. Main Gear has at least figured out that its R53400G APU-only pairing should run two sticks of RAM. But it's also a $700 computer with an APU only. And it's an APU from 2019 that was $140 at the time of launch. This computer has maybe $300 of core components and value. And those are ones that are in stock, by the way, but it's $700. But don't worry, it includes RGB lighting kit and rear RGB fan, because that's what we need to spend the budget on. The Dell G5 is another great example. This is a $900 system, this model. You get a 10400 f a GTX 1650 Super with a green PCB plugged into an unpainted motherboard and using what appears to be a decade-old rear fan. We saw one in our local Best Buy. It also has a single stick of 2666 MHz RAM, a 1TB hard drive, and not even an SSD for the boot drive, which will be noticeable at this point. If they weren't so busy trying to sneak things like monthly subscription support into the sale, they might realize that an SSD would be an easier value add for the customer. And finally, 120 millimeter water cooling solutions are really commonly thrown into cheap pre-built. These are often, as we've shown time and time again in our cooler testing, worse than a cheap tower cooler. Companies do this to tick a marketing checkbox and to get an RGB logo in there while saying the words water cooling. It's a waste of the customer's money that could go towards something more effective, like a second stick of RAM or another component coupled with the stock cooler instead. So we're pointing out the low-hanging fruit here, the easy ones, that obviously have some kind of mismatch in there. But not all of them are like this. There are actually several very well-matched components from system builds that we've seen in the past couple of weeks. But it seems to change daily, and it's not particularly worth calling out the specific models because they snap in and out of existence depending on the week and the GPU supply. But the point is to pay careful attention. You probably will end up buying something you don't want in the system uh, in order to get most of what you want. And that's just the nature of buying something that's pre-assembled. And for enthusiasts in the audience, you are more likely to notice this than someone who's never built a computer before or done any research. And obviously that's the original audience for OEMs and, and SIs. And they do provide a valuable service and we do think it's important. But we just want to make sure everyone's aware of what to look for when buying because there are really good options out there and then there are some that are not good at all. It would just be a shame to overspend on things like maybe a thousand watt power supply, RGB LEDs, and too many fans. It's another really common one we see where it's just got fans in every slot 
but it's running on an i3 and something like a GTX 1650 or a GT 1030, where you're now wasting all of this budget in the system, all the bomb on components that don't really improve the quality of life for the user. So keep an eye on that. Enough of this topic, though. This section was mostly just to say, look at the sum of the system, not just the CPU and the GPU. Common places to look would be power supply and the RAM especially. Check the frequency, and they might screw you on XMP, but more on that later. And the, the, the number of sticks, especially for an APU system where it starts to matter a lot more. Uh, and beyond that, you're looking at things like the cooler. If you can step down to an air cooler from a 120 mil, we normally recommend it. There are worse air coolers that are really small. But if you get a tower cooler, there's a very good chance that it's better than a 120 mil liquid cooler from Asetek. One of the oldest tricks in the book for OEMs, not SIs here, is to use proprietary or less than standard parts. It's not as common as it used to be, but especially in non-gaming systems that might be marked as a family computer. You'll still run into non-standard power supplies, motherboards, and cases that make it difficult to upgrade. Fortunately, most systems our audience would likely buy don't fall into this category and are primarily immune. If you're buying the lowest end possible office or family PC, though, keep an eye on the internals, especially if you think you might want to upgrade it later to keep it alive. You'll sometimes find things like TFX power supplies in place of ATX or just custom power supplies limiting options for keeping the system in deployment later on. We've also had a lot of experiences where systems don't boot out of the box or have missing secondary drives. If you run into this, a quick way to fix it is normally to navigate into BIOS and change the boot device to the correct one. It's normally there. It's just we've seen OEMs and SIs mess up BIOS with the CSM options uh, or with secondary drives, they just forget to initialize it. And if you need to do that, Check diskmgmt.msc, D-I-S-K-M-G-M-T.msc, and make sure the disk is initialized. Be careful not to format something that you don't want to format. Both of these issues have popped up in, in previous reviews we've done. Of course, it's possible that they also just forget to install the drive altogether, but less likely. As for memory and XMP, even after years of being criticized by reviewers for the practice, system builders still often neglect to enable XMP to actually achieve the higher memory speeds that are advertised on the product. And that's the real problem. We've seen manufacturers like CyberPower and iBuyPower and Walmart and NZXT misrepresent systems in the past, by our opinion, by listing the memory speeds that the modules can achieve while failing to configure those speeds in BIOS. The end result is that you're overpaying for something that isn't even configured as advertised, especially for someone who doesn't know better. This isn't even hard to fix, but it should be fixed if you think you're paying for 3600 megahertz RAM and you're running at 2666 instead. Additionally, some manufacturers claim that XMP violates the warranty or that it's dangerous, but don't let them scare you away from using something as simple as XMP. It's just a profile that's preset. We've never heard of XMP actually causing damage in the real world, and frankly, it's not like anyone would know you used it. Just pull the CMOS battery. And finally, as a general warning, we noticed that some SIs are listing systems as in stock on the page where you shop for them, but then they state that the GPU extends the lead time by four to six weeks. This isn't really a problem, it's the whole industry right now, but what we want to point out is that because it's not immediately obvious, you might be adding to cart and purchasing something without realizing that you're actually purchasing it six weeks out instead. And next, pay attention to the warranty or the support offered by the SI or the OEM if you know how to maintain the system, maybe it's less important, but if you don't, this is one of the main reasons you would buy from a pre-built manufacturer assembly line because then it's one point of contact, like we said earlier. So manufacturers will often provide two to three year warranties on individual parts. That'd be like a video card or a RAM kit or whatever from if you bought it from Newegg directly. And so a one year warranty on a pre-built computer isn't great. It's somewhat common, but uh, computers are complex things. So either way, though, you might be able to claim a component warranty through that pre-built manufacturer at a later date, even if you're outside of the one year. But just pay attention to the warranty policies if it's something that matters to you. And of course, if it's less than one year, then we'd say just walk away and buy from someone else. If you feel like doing a quick check, it might also be worth putting in a call to tech support to see if you're able to get through. This is only really a step worth doing if you're maybe buying multiple of these, like for a small office. It, at that point, you're invested enough where you might want to call tech support and see, can I get to someone? How long does it normally take? And uh, do they seem competent if you ask some basic questions about what computers you should buy, even if you know what you want to buy. But 
as stated, this step's not really worth it for someone just buying one system because you might end up on hold for half an hour and they're probably all going to do that to you. Uh, finally, we've also seen manufacturers trying to take advantage of the current market by dumping old systems. This is actually a good thing in a sense in that it's better than going to a landfill, but the pricing is obscene in some instances. So we saw a $1,000 Corsair 1 system, one of the small ones, with an i7-7700 non-K and a GTX 1070 in it for a grand. So uh, just, just don't, don't do that. Don't buy it. But that's it for this one. Hopefully that helps someone out there. Uh, SIs and OEMs absolutely have a place in the industry. They do provide a valuable service, but the value of that service is sometimes inflated in ways uh, to the point where it is no longer valuable to you. So just be careful on the, the pitfalls of accidentally overspending on stuff and watch out for things like the support and warranty options where everybody wants you on a subscription model now. So that's it. Thanks for watching. As always, speaking of subscription models, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for free by clicking the link in the description below, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net if you'd like to buy something like one of our ModMats shirts or other items. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.